Hello everyone, welcome back to Lead the Standard with Atoll. I am Kelly Taylor and today we're diving into episode 23 titled Beyond Physical Safety and Why Psychosocial Hazards Matter. This episode is based on insights as always from EDM edition number 70 where we talk about those risks such as mental health, emotional health, um, and <laughs> fumbling around <laughs> um, and how all of these are just as critical to our physical safety in the workplace. But today we are flipping the script a little bit. I will be leading the conversation, but as always, I, as you will have heard, I'm joined by the fabulous Jackie. <laughs> She's filling in my role as co-host um, to add in her very valuable two cents. Good morning, Jackie. Hello. God, is it only two cents worth? No, look, it's very valuable two cents. <laughs> Sorry about that cluttering. My microphone fell. So I'm off to a great start. Um, yeah, I'm actually in, going to enjoy just being the co-host. It's sort of like being an audit team member. And um, I was telling a, a student yesterday when I was recording a video that it's a great opportunity to be an audit team member because you get to, I think, enjoy it more. Because, you know, you're leading it and I can just give you my two cents worth or ask questions. But um, I've got maybe five cents worth before you keep going. Because I suppose what, what you mentioned was um, psychosocial risks. And as everyone knows, my brain, it's sort of like my support, you know, blankie. When yeah. you're a baby. Your weighted um, blanket. Yeah, it's my support thing. I always go back to okay is there an ISO standard okay so I, I, I do like having opinions but I like my opinions to be based on fact <laughs> and I do want to point out and we might touch on this a bit as we work through what you're covering there is actually an ISO standard um, and it's for psychosocial risk or psychological health and safety it's in the ISO 45,000 family um, but it's ISO 45003. So obviously we have 45001, which are the like the OH&S management systems, and that's what you audit against. That's what you build your system against. But the um, 45003 being specifically around psychological health and safety, it actually... What's the word? It aligns nicely with 45001 because it's really about identifying hazards and assessing them and risks and then then um, putting controls in place. Obviously, when you do that under the framework of 45001, it's not just the physical stuff. It is the psychological health and safety side as well. And it used to be something that would get missed a lot. But now it's great to see that there's actually a specific standard that helps us to understand what that might look like. And so I think it's a great support um, standard as, you know, if you're implementing 45001, just to help us to identify those psychological health and safety hazards and associated risks. Yeah, thank you, Jackie. And yeah, we we will briefly reference it, but we won't be talking about that today, okay. which is really key. Um, speaking of psychosocial and psychological mental health risks, again, last week we acknowledged the elephant on my roof. The elephant is back again. So <laughs> apologies for any background noise. They promised me they're working at the other end of the house, but that doesn't seem to be the case. So <laughs> it's going to be an interesting one. Um, but let's yeah, let's get into it. As you just mentioned, then, Jackie. Um psychosocial risks have become quite a key area of a modern workplace, especially with the introduction of 45,003, which I agree is yeah. really important and that addresses the risk directly. But while physical safety is the foundation of mental and emotional well-being, um, they are essential for productive work environments. So we are going to actually okay. delve into why businesses should proactively manage these psychosocial risks. Um, but I did want to just start by explaining how we came across this topic because it is a little bit different to some of the things that we've discussed in the past. Um, so recently um, we were talking about National Safety Month here in Australia. That's October. 
and how as a team that we would like to address this year's theme and each week has its own theme. And we're not primarily safety people, as we like to call them. I'm Jackie, you are the quality guru, and I quite simply just love a good system or a good process. <laughs> so it wasn't something that came easily or naturally to either of us. It wasn't the topic of conversation that we have around the imaginary water cooler. But you had a bit of an aha moment that we both were able to relate back to our personal and very separate experiences of trekking Kokoda um, in okay. Papua New Guinea. Now, I don't want to tread on your toes, pun intended, and get <laughs> um, too much into your insights because we're going to be talking about them a bit more next week. But um, I did piggyback a little bit, another pun, thank you, you're welcome, um, <laughs> of that idea when I was drafting mm -hmm. this episode and this edition. So I guess I'll start by explaining what a psychosocial hazards are and how we got onto them. So it's just, as I said before, another um, OH&S related topic that is just as important as physical hazards, but it is often overlooked. So that's the psychosocial hazard. Now, yep. these are social and psychological risks which are presented in the workplace that not only affect an individual's health, but the collective productivity of an organisation. So Great that encompasses point. things like work-related stress, harassment, bullying, lack of support, um, all of those which we know can significantly impact the mental well-being. So in many ways, and this is how we kind of got onto that conversation, a, a team is like that track across Kokoda. When we work together, we can overcome those tough challenges but if we're not mindful of the load that we're placing on one another, that journey becomes much harder. And while workloads and pressures will always exist, it's how we manage them and how we support each other that defines the experience and the outcome, both for the individual and for the greater team. So again, puns, analogies, all those sorts of things. Think of a psychosocial hazard like the weight in a backpack. We can all carry a certain amount of weight and we can build on that slowly and get used to that. But when that load becomes that little bit too heavy or unevenly distributed, which happens a lot on the track, um, it becomes exhausting. So yeah. just as, and Jackie, you're nodding along going, yeah, that, it's not, a, not an easy journey. So just as we would need to redistribute our weight in our backpacks for us to keep moving forward, an organisation really needs to address and identify those psychosocial risks to maintain a healthy and a motivated team. But Jackie, just before I get into the details of what um, that newsletter was about, did you have any thoughts that you wanted to share on this? No, like, and as you know, as you saw, I I was nodding along with that, and I think a big light bulb moment in what you spoke about there was um, it's not just the individual it does actually impact the team. And something else that came to mind, it's not just what's happening at work either. Um, we have to consider what's happening in people's personal lives because obviously, you know, if there's something impacting their emotions that's external to work, well, they're bringing it to work as well. So. Yeah, I, you know, it, it's it's internal and external are my thoughts. Does that make sense? It does make sense. Sorry, I was mm. I'm nodding along and muting as my roof was being screwed back down. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Apologies. See, it's external distractions. It's it, like, yes. Perfect yes, example. Exactly. Perfect example. Um, so, yeah, the, all of those things, they got me thinking about the peace approach to managing psychosocial hazards. And look, let's count the number of times. Let's play psychosocial bingo. How many times does Kelly mispronounce that word? That's the challenge for this way. <laughs> You're um, doing very well. Uh, I, I'm focused today. It's great. <laughs> so the PEACE approach to managing psychosocial hazards is quite simply a lovely acronym. P, prioritise mental health. E, evaluate your risks. A, actively address issues. C, create supportive environments. And E, evaluate and adjust continuously. Yep. So 
let's get into that. That was my short response answer that I like to give, or like Jackie to give. And the first step in the PEACE approach to managing psychosocial hazards, as I said, is prioritised mental health. So we should start by acknowledging the importance of mental health in the workplace and recognise that addressing psychosocial hazards is just as crucial as managing those physical risks. So workers exposed to psychosocial hazards face higher risk of psychological injuries, which are more often much more difficult to manage than the physical ones. Now, here's an interesting statistic. Safe Work Australia reported that mental health claims now take up 9% of serious workers' compensation claims and the recovery times are significantly longer than those for physical injuries. So by prioritising mental health means we're creating an environment where employees feel supported Mm. and those psychological risks are addressed more proactively. And I will share um, a link in the show notes to where you can read that full report. Um, And Jackie, I thought this was a really interesting segue to our conversation last week um, or the week before, a couple of episodes ago, about um, your brother and his experience. We did kind of Mm. touch on this a little bit. So based on that experience, why do you think that mental health claims might have increased so significantly in recent years? I suppose, look, this is an uneducated guess, really. And I know we talked about it with my brother who who had physical injuries, but it was actually the the psychological, emotional, um, I suppose, impact that the injuries had on his recovery. So that's where physical and emotional, and, and I suppose psychological, come in come into play. You know, not being able to work, having no control over that, and so on. But do you think it's becoming? Uh, I suppose you said 9% of serious workers' compensation claims. Do you think it's because we're more aware as well? Because I I suppose I just go back to our work environment and I hope that everyone here is comfortable to share um, what's going on in their own life. I think I shared something yesterday that impacted my mood. Um, and it wasn't work related; it was um, externally related. Just, and I suppose I share it so people understand. You know, if I respond shortly, or uh, yeah, my my mood is not as it is um, because you're distracted, aren't you? Yeah. You know, and you know, um, I had to take a few moments during the day, and. You know, I think even in our check-in or stand-up, Kelly, isn't there a question that you've added? Yeah, What's your yeah I'm going to talk about energy? that in the latest step. Oh, okay, yeah. I won't jump ahead. Yeah. But, I, I but it's a good demonstration yeah. of connection. Yeah, so, yeah, that's what I'm thinking is is the workplace, yeah, we need to make it, it more comfortable for people to yeah express and share. So, as you said before, because the whole team is impacted, because otherwise it's like, oh, wow, Jackie, she's in a crappy mood today. Why is she being such a bitch, blah, 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 blah. And, look, it's no excuse for being a bitch or whatever, but yeah. if it's not all the time, then people can understand what's going on in the background. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah I like that you said, but it is a priority for us here because – and we – we are open with that. Even through our interview process, um, we are, like we're quite open with it. We being open and honest and transparent, and all of those values of an auditor and those personal behaviours we instil in the team. And if you're not comfortable, um, if the team members aren't comfortable, they can go to either of us. Like it's not you don't have to go to one person yeah. or the other. Um, yeah. We have channels available for people. But obviously, we're a small team, but we have channels available which we'll talk about later on and how people can address those things but yeah as you said and I'm going to touch on it in the second step is that it it is very important to us we have um neurodiverse team members and consultants Mm -hmm. 
we have people who have medical issues. We have Mm -hmm. mothers. We have people who Mm -hmm. have mothers. Um, (laughs) I'm I'm very much expecting my father to walk through and just interrupt. He's now joking about it. So, yeah, there's lots of things. You said not just in that space. Um, But, again, we, we like to know how people are going so that we can support them both through that personal journey and make acceptance it, oh, sorry what's the word I'm after make I don't know, plans support them through what yeah. we can outside but also understand that as you said you needed some time out your quality of work you weren't able to concentrate you weren't able to focus so by sharing with people that mental health is important to us it is a priority that helps with other in in all of these other spaces which we will get on to um, I am just very quickly as I do this I'm just going to quickly share um the model which i forgot to do i apologize let's see what it's gonna do is it gonna look get week two on this new platform and i've frozen the system well done (laughs) well done so if you're just listening you've got no clue what we're doing um but if you're watching let's be honest if you're watching nothing's happening i'm pretty sure i've just broken the system so yeah (laughs) look I actually can't get rid of that. Now, that's hilarious. Okay. There we go. Can oh, you see? Oh, it's coming. It's yep. there. Brilliant. Okay. Don't click, press enter. So this is the face model. All right. I am going to now, while we have that on screen, um, the second step in the piece model, uh, as you can see there, is evaluate, um, evaluate risks. So regularly assess the workplace to identify psychosocial hazards, including excessive workloads, lack of support, poor communication channels. Now, doing all of this will help identify those hidden stresses that can t- contribute to mental health issues. And using tools like employee surveys, Anonymous feedback um, allows businesses to uncover these risks. And then regularly sharing those evaluations also ensures that businesses stay informed about what's going on um, and any new psycho, any new psychosocial hazards, bingo, really? um, making it easier to address them before they escalate into more serious problems. No. Now, and that's... Um, we, we talked about that just then, Jackie, is having that openness with our team. We do um, a daily standout. Um, we have a regular pulse survey, which is entirely anonymous. The pulse survey is completely anonymous. So we can gauge the overall business sentiment. Now, I know some businesses do that every 12 months. And are our employees happy? Of course they're happy. We've got a performance review and a pay rise based off this pulse survey that you're doing now and all of those results come out each week. For that reason, I don't know how accurate those would be. Would you agree, Jackie? (laughs) (laughs) But also, if you're not doing it regularly, you're not understanding your people. So um, have you heard of any other tools and ways, Jackie, that people or methods that people use to regularly assess those risks? in your well the risk i think more of a check-in um and i think back more so to the pandemic there um i had Mm. clients that had to move an entire workforce of 100 people to work from home and they had um managers check-ins um also when you're doing zooms it was a requirement that the camera was on because it's it's much easier to pick up yeah body language etc and you know people's general um i suppose behavior and where their head might be at um also the 30-day plan um which we've adopted i stole that from one of my clients (laughs) who adopted a 30-day plan during the pandemic just to touch base with people and really drive conversations to find out yeah what what's going on like even though the 30-day plan is about you know setting your focus and understanding your goals it's a it's a real chance for a one-on-one um Mm. and you know and to and to understand what's going on in each other's worlds um i have to say going off on a slightly different tangent you mentioned 
<laughs> you mentioned excessive workloads. Mm. That is always a concern for me because I know at Atoll that has a huge impact on people. Um, mm. We have gotten better, but mm. I still don't think we're where we should be. Um, no. So, yeah, excessive work, especially in a small team, and especially if you're a jack of all trades, um, no. it's easy to get wrapped up in in other yeah other areas um, and take and and I do the same thing. It's just like oh stuff it. I'm just going to do it myself. Yeah. When when really yeah we we should have enough people to you know yeah I think yesterday I did it. I updated something in Calendly for at all. Because the link, you know, the link wasn't, the link was working, but it wasn't a very good sort of pitch. I thought, oh, I can just send that to someone. To, I thought, you know, how long is that going to take? Everyone's busy. And I thought, no, I'm just going to do it. So we all, yes, I, I prevented someone from uh, like overworking them, but I took it on instead. Yeah, um, I, and I did the same thing yesterday too. So yeah, yeah. yeah so it, and it's hard. And I noticed actually Christine yesterday put she couldn't get something done because she I can't couldn't remember the other thing, but one of them was oh I'm doing a project for Jackie, but I didn't mean her to drop everything and do it, and I felt sort of bad about not being clear and like don't. Don't stop what you're doing. It's not that important, but it, you know it, it goes back to that workload. So I think, yeah, we we really need to be very conscious of that, and that that's one thing that sort of yeah, keeps me awake at night. Yeah, and and that's as a manager. So you you are aware of your team's workloads, and we've we've again we've just in um, employed some new tools that we're starting to roll out, and we've got. Um, Melissa is back from her um, gallivanting trip around the world, which was very successful. I, sh I shall shout out. It was very successful yep. for her son. Um, but we, we're we just getting back into that mojo and changing people's roles yes. and retraining people on new systems so that we can be more um, proactive on that. And that communication yeah. part is really important. Um, but in... As you said, you've you've given something and someone has made the assumption that has to happen straight away. Then you've also got things that don't need to happen straight away and people get really excited about them or you're not communicating yeah. that, okay, this is what's going to happen long term. You need to kind of balance those expectations so people know, okay, this is this is my priorities. This is what needs to be done. This is my responsibilities. This is not in my scope of works, all those sorts of things, being open about that and eval evaluating those processes. We have our um, resource register that we go through. And at the mm -hmm. moment, because people are changing their roles, that's getting a lot of, a, quite a bit of a workout so we can still see yep. where those gaps are and be mindful of how much work we are giving people who are in that jack-of-all-trades yeah. banner. Um, and then yes. those people that want to be in the jack of all trades banner that that need to be quite specific in their role, which would apply to a lot mm, of people. Mm. Um, we have a lot of yes people in our team, which is a good thing and a bad thing. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, and I know that we'll touch on that in the next couple of steps as well. So yeah. I, I would like to move on to the next one. The third step in the peace approach is actively addressing those issues. So implement targeted interventions such as adjusting the workloads, fostering open communication, and providing training to mitigate those risks. So by actively addressing the issues as they arrive, and that's really important, as they arise, businesses can prevent burnout and reduce workplace stress. So as we've said, um, we do our daily stand-ups. They allow us to check in on how employees are feeling. And the question that we ask is not, how are you feeling? What is your mood? It's, what is your energy like today? And depending on how they've interpreted that or how they're feeling, Jackie and I are able to either provide extra support, provide people space, 
um, if needed and or requested. So we're addressing those issues head on instead of waiting for them to worsen. We're creating a more balanced and supportive work environment in doing that. Um, and I think we actually, as we were setting up that um, that system, Jackie, you and I had a lot of conversation around that question yeah. because today my energy physically is through the roof. Mentally, I've got a lot going on. Um, yeah. And that, like, there's a balance in that. So we've got a five-step, good, great, okay, not so good, pretty terrible, yeah. are, the, are the five things. And there's an option there to explain. So it could be yeah. like yesterday you shared your um, your story and it might be, look, I've got a lot of energy, but I just really, I, I can't deal with all of the direct messages today. So please, it, it helps everyone gauge, I guess, that. Yeah, um, yeah. That race, really. Yeah. And I noticed that the, the system that you use um, sort of highlights those energy like it says, oh, there's two people that have just said they're okay. So you don't have to go trawling through the full stand-up. It okay. sort of highlights that energy. So as as a manager, or even hey, we can all see it, all employees yeah. can can look at it and go, oh, I might check in with someone. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I think, yeah. You know, and look, I'm not saying it's perfect, but we're trying to put in place that you know everyone feels comfortable to share what's what's going on um and i suppose that's probably an external thing but you also have in there um what's blocked so that's yeah. an internal one because that can be a stressor too if you like you know oh man i just want to get this done like for instance i've been annoying you kelly because i'm ahead on my run sheet prep but i can't update my asana task because you're in the process of of um updating you know, that updating it and improving it and i think yesterday you know i might be four behind and as a painful organized systems person and kelly can relate to this that does my head in okay. <laughs> it's like but, ah but that's a really good point here so we've we've identified with we've, we've um that there is this like little pain point. It is a little pain point, but it escalates and it escalates and it escalates. But the reason that I am changing that process is because there's been this little pain point and we're trying to address it in a way that works for the people. And I think that's, again, that's the important place here, which, which is, yes. again, leads into the next step. Yes. But how does the team yeah. say, this? I'm blocked at this point because we can fix those systems. And, and it would look, in an ideal world, we'll get to a spot where everyone is great and that there is nothing blocked, but we are realists and we know that that's <laughs> unlikely to happen. So, that again, that's why we've implemented this system. So yeah, um, we, we've only been using it for two weeks and I feel like people, the conversations I'm having with team members is they are enjoying Ugh. this much better because they're having to stop and think about, oh, I'm not, these are my tasks for today. This is what I'm here. Hi, good morning. I'm here. It's okay. This is, I've got a purpose for today. Did I achieve what I achieved yesterday? Is it my fault? Someone else's fault? The system's fault? Is anything or anyone at fault? And it helps you to identify or, or I suppose, label that feeling, that sense of stress, if there is one, mm. or boost you if you if you are in that positive space mm. um, um can i say something yeah i was just going to ask if you had anything further uh, in that big something you mentioned there that sort of really stuck in my head was about the people like you know you, you, you're changing the systems so it's it's more you well i wouldn't even say user friendly it was always user friendly but mm, it was hard to look ahead and it was difficult to see what was coming next. Um, it was built for somebody else who's no longer here and then it doesn't, it doesn't work for the, the new people. No. So the key point is the system is about the people, mm. not the system and making it this U-B thing. Like 
and and look, we're all into automation, et cetera, which is what we tried to do, but there there wasn't any transparency or visibility right. for the team. So the the system approach that you know where Kelly's in the middle of updating at the moment is more so we can all see what's happening across yeah. the board. Everything's a lot more transparent. So at, when you mentioned that it sort of dawned on me that the any sort of system or process, while it is about consistency of an output and making sure that, you know, we're delivering consistently to our customers or keeping people safe and so on, it's about the people yeah. as well, the people using it. So, you know, that's a great segue to engagement and participation, all those things, you know, that are to do with OH&S. Mm. It's interesting because now that we're talking this through, the reason that we went to that automation was because, hindsight's a wonderful thing, Jackie, um, the person that was in this role that was impacted by what we have now in, like implemented and are pulling back on was that they were overwhelmed with mm-hmm. everything that they had in future. Like I, I can see what I have to do for the next 12 months and that's doing my head in and I'm worrying about, next December, not this week. And that's that's how that person worked and that they focused. So we created a system where they only saw what they really needed to focus on this week or the week ahead, et cetera. And now the team we've got are like, I'm trying to plan ahead and plan my time and I need got leave coming up and I can't see what's happening outside of two weeks. Mm-hmm. What does the next six, 12 months look like for me? So it's a really important lesson in yeah. working with the team and the people and understanding the need, as you said, the needs of the people and how they work. So all yeah. of our team seem to have that same mindset now. Of, look, I, I like to see ahead. I like the big picture. I like the goal. And then that helps me to just breathe. I can full transparency. I know what's going on. That yeah. previous person was, it was just a bit too much for them. So we could have managed yeah. that in a different way, yeah. Um, but yeah, that flexibility and that that yeah. adaptation yeah. Um, comes from that communication. So absolutely, yeah, and Thanks. yeah, light bulb moment. It's about the people. Yeah, yeah. It's funny that safety is about mm, the people. I know. Alrighty, <laughs> I'm going to continue on with the fourth step in the peace approach to managing psychosocial hazards. Um, that is create, create a supportive environment. So oh, again, good segue. yeah, promoting a workplace culture where mental health is openly discussed and support systems are readily available for employees experiencing challenges. So that means building a supportive environment in um, encouraging open communication, reducing the stigma around mental health and making resources and that's people, tools, etc., easily accessible. Um, offering mental health days, employee assistance programs, wellness initiatives. Um, they can all foster a culture where an employee feels safe enough to seek help. And this openness, I guess, is what's key to long-term workplace well-being. Now, we're, as we've said many a time, a small team, so an EAP isn't necessarily relevant to us. Um, but again, we were at the HR conference a couple of weeks ago and the number of people saying, oh, um, we've got an EAP for our people, but they don't use it because HR can see that they're using it and HR could do, mm. there was no, they didn't feel comfortable because the, the business had a bit of a mental health stigma approach. And if they went to someone and talked about this, then someone else would know and then, then they wouldn't get that promotion or then this and then that. Yeah. That's not creating that environment. Yeah. So have yeah. you seen other examples of that, Jack? I think we talked about it last week a little bit with your brother as well and how they wouldn't. Yeah, and that's probably more the challenges. But, yeah, I, I suppose I shared a little bit from, from what I've seen in the businesses I've worked with. It's, it's you know, that, um, it, it all, I think it all boils down to that, ongoing and continual communication whether it's a small team or a large team um, having a a person or a group that someone can 
come to and feel comfortable about. But I have also seen on the other side um, and, and spoke to people, say, applying for a new job where they don't feel comfortable um, mm. at that point sharing that they've had mental health issues because they feel that it's going to impact their chances at getting the job. Mm. So, and I, I guess it depends, yeah, it depends on the workplace and the, yeah, their focus on diversity and, um, yeah, mental health and, yeah, basic, well, the culture. The, really what you're talking about is the culture, isn't it? Yeah. So it doesn't have to be just these physical things. It's that culture of support. Mm. And we all know changing culture takes it's time. Not easy. Yeah. 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 I've got a, a note here um, on my screen again from the HR conference. I love that we went to this HR L and D tech yeah. fest to look at all the L and D technology and we came back with all of these things that we never expected. Um, one of the other themes that we had right through that was vulnerability in leadership. So yeah. Um, you've shared with us yesterday your challenge um, as a leader, and, and I'm sure a lot of people listening to this are potentially managers, but everybody has some form of leadership capability in them. And sharing that vulnerability and being open, if you as a leader are able to say, look, I'm struggling today, or look, I'm not a great public speaker. Um, this is I'm, I'm uncomfortable with this space just like you. As a leader, being vulnerable and open about your own situations, obviously within your own comfort zone, but being yeah. open and vulnerable to your team um, will help to support all of this, um, this culture and this growth and, and your team being able to do the same thing as well. So yeah, very I think that was, yeah, that was a really big insight for me is like everybody is vulnerable, um, mm -hmm. no matter who you are, how you are. And um can't think of her name right now, Liz, someone. Um, I'll, again, I'll see if I can find it, put it in the show notes. She had a great example um, of how shared vulnerability was working in the banking sector, um, a whole new leadership program. And because they were having so many issues with burnout and staff retention mm -hmm. because people were trying to achieve these levels of perfection that are never yeah. achievable. So, yeah. yeah, create that culture where expectations um, are understood, people are comfortable. Um, yeah, vulnerability is a is seen as a um a positive trait, not a negative trait. That's yeah, and that's actually a really good point. Yeah. Yeah. I borrowed that one. No, I'm not claiming that one. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I will I will full disclosure do not take that one myself. Um uh, again, let let's keep moving today. Um the fifth and final step in the PEACE approach to managing psycho psychosocial hazards is evaluate and adjust accordingly. Um, so making psychosocial risk management an ongoing process by continually monitoring the impact of your interventions and refining them as needed. And Jackie, you've used that word continually a number of times. So those regular evaluations allow that business to adapt strategies based on employee feedback evolving needs of the employees and like the workplace, the workforce, and by continuously adjusting those interventions, you can ensure that your mental health support remains relevant, which is really important, effective. It'll maintain that healthier and the biggest positive of all, a more engaged and happy workforce. And I think, yeah, having that openness um, does drive engagement. I think we had um, one of the team members the other week. Was like, I've got a, um, not feeling real good. Can I leave? I'm like, if if you're not feeling great in yourself <laughs> and you can't work for yourself or operate, function as an individual, you're no good to the greater team. So make sure that you like you allow people to make those judgments. I think is really important, um, and don't force burnout or exhaustion on somebody 
Yeah, without feeling, and I'm sure there's some wording in forty five thousand and one about around this. Um, you know, oh, fear of reprisal is actually yes. the wording they use. So, and you know, that's a big driver that stops people from from sharing their vulnerabilities is that fear of reprisal. But um, in ISO forty five thousand and one, it specifically mentioned those words that people should feel comfortable to, you know, speak up, speak out, um, report issues um, without that fear. And I still yeah, think in some industries and in some workplaces that, yeah, is still sort of in the back back of their, their heads, that's for sure. Right. Um, can I share something I thought of as you were talking absolutely, that through? Absolutely. I have... Like I mentioned this before, this is all your your um peace approach is it is still about building a culture, and I was excitedly reading ISO I think it's ten thousand and ten. Um, I have it here, um, which is around quality culture, which as you said um before i do love a good quality system but it's so much more than a system it's a culture but what i was reading in there applies obviously to ohs and psychosocial as well but the key the key intent or my key takeaway from reading that standard is that we need to understand what our future culture looks like set set some what what do we want this workplace to be so that's that future focus i think is the wording that they use and then you set and you align those to your objectives so you can reach towards that future focus and then you implement it obviously and then as you've just said here you evaluate and check it so it's it's really embedded within a system anyway. And of course, with OHS, 45,001 supports that. But you can apply and pick up. Oh, I've just had a light bulb moment. You can apply and pick up those system steps. And you can pick all of that up and, and dump it in, well, culture. Like, what's the future focus? What sort of culture do we want to develop? How do we get there? And then we'll give that a go. We'll implement and then we'll check and improve. And then we'll analyze, are we there yet? Are we there yet? You know, that's like the kids in the car. <laughs> are we there yet? But, um, you know, it it really is that that future focus, I think. I absolutely agree. There's there's so many connections with psycho psychosocial matters are not just as you said an OHS thing. They're they're across the board. Yes, it sits into that. But yeah, your people, your connection, your stakeholders, your okay. interested parties. It's okay. not just about the people. It does affect everybody and everything. So I love that you've able to. Somehow managed to connect OHS back to quality. Who would have thought? <laughs> um, one thing before we do wrap up today that we haven't touched on specifically, but is really important to to be aware of, is that yes, everything we are talking about here is psychosocial, mental health, etc. But if you haven't, or if you aren't careful about managing those psychosocial and psychological mental health risks and I want to say injuries that's probably not the right word they can very quickly translate into the physical world because mm -hmm. if someone is not paying attention or distracted or in their little you know when you're just having a moment and you get into that daydream space and you don't want someone daydreaming about work pressures etc while they're running their hand through a planer like because they'll run oh. their hand through a planer. You, you need to be, I said, prioritise mental health and then that will have that flow on to 
physical, occupational health safety outcomes as well. So I think that's really important to highlight good that. Good point. Yeah, yeah, good point. Excellent. Thanks, Jackie. I learned from you. <laughs> okay. Well, as I said, that is the last uh, point there. So I am going to very quickly recap um, today's PEACE model. The PEACE approach to managing psychosocial hazards, P, prioritise mental health, E, evaluate those risks, A, actively address issues, C, create a supportive environment, E, evaluate and adjust continuously. So, Jackie, before we wrap up, was there anything further that you wanted to add to today's session? No, not really, but I will have my share my tagline while I'm here. Like, because you know, I like staying curious and always leading the standard. Uh, because if you stay curious and you lead the standard, you'll continually find new opportunities for growth and excellence in your career. So, come along on the ride with us. Thank you, Jackie. That is a wrap on today's episode, Going Beyond Physical Safety and Why Psychosocial Hazards Matter. I do hope that you found this discussion valuable and you can take something away for your team. Um, Jackie and I are more than happy to share our vulnerabilities along these sessions to help you um, learn from our experiences. Uh, Please do join us next week where we'll be continuing the safety um, is about people epiphany that Jackie had a few weeks ago. Um, we will be discussing as it lead the standard newsletter number 71, I think. I hope I'm right. We'll find out. It'll be in the show notes. Um, as I said, <laughs> already alluded to the fact that will be people are the heart of safety. So until next time, do please keep leading the standard and we will see you next week. Goodbye for now. Bye.